Hey everybody, it's Peter, and this one's gonna be a little different than the other videos I normally do. Normally I focus on power sports, but I'm actually gonna tell you a bit of a personal story, something that I hadn't intended to make into a video. It's a Friday afternoon, I'm unshaven. I got a dog behind me that does not wanna be here, and he's playing with his squeaky toys. This is the third time I've tried to record it, but uh, he's playing with his squeaky toys. Anyways, casual video, I wanna to talk to you about the time this past winter where I camped with my son, actually, uh, yeah, late winter, early spring, probably late winter, where I camped with my son in the Tesla Model Y. A lot of people have questions about uh, what it went like, how much battery usage, things to be aware of, and I think I learned a lot and have something to share. So that's what we're gonna talk about. And again, you have to forgive the little more casual video because um, my friend here does not wanna be here. All right, so let's talk about what we did. First of all, let's just tell you about why we did this instead of just stay in a hotel. Uh, mostly my son, and he's given me permission to share this story, he's been going through a whole bunch of medical stuff uh, for basically from last fall through the whole winter into the spring now. And uh, he's on his way to recovery and we were able to kind of do something fun. And, uh, you know, he, he'd spent a lot of time, like I said, in and out of hospital. He spent a lot of time sitting in our house uh, without doing a lot of things that he wanted to do. And uh, kind of like that, just trapped, couldn't go anywhere. So we sat there one Friday morning and we were talking about what we could do. And I'm like, let's go do something fun. Why are you growling? You're fine. So I was like, let's go do something fun. And he's like, well, what do you want to do? I'm like, oh, maybe we should go somewhere. So we chose Quebec City. We live in Fredericton, New Brunswick. Quebec City is about five and a half hour drive away. Uh, if you drive a Tesla out here on major network, major highways, just not a hard trip to do. So that turned into maybe we should, oh, we could let's just go this afternoon right away. So no planning kind of went out, but one of the key things he wanted to do is he knew the Tesla has a camp mode. He knew you could camp in the Tesla. So he's like, we're sleeping in the Tesla. And for a kid who hadn't had anything fun in a long time, we're like, you know what? Yeah, let's do it. So this is the story of me sleeping in the Tesla with my son. I'm gonna tell you about the pros and cons. I'm gonna tell you about uh, how it went, a few things that surprised me and just things to be aware of if you do it yourself. So let's go with a couple pictures now. So the car that we own, the car that we decided to camp in is the Tesla Model Y. And this is it one morning. Now we had a couple nights of snow, uh, both nights. Uh, one night was actually worse than the other. This night was not as bad as the other night. But if you've never been to Quebec City, I wanna show you just a couple pictures here because it is absolutely gorgeous. So over here, here's a picture of just the skyline. This is the Chateau Frontenac uh, Hotel. It is a beautiful hotel. It is a, you know, one of those prime pieces. The city of Quebec City is actually, uh, the old Quebec City is actually one of the original walled cities still left in North America. So it's just really cool. Uh, here's a picture of a church here that we went into. So it's not just the hotel. It's, uh, you know, here's another picture looking up at the hotel um, from some of the lower city here. So, so many old buildings, so many history. It's like going to a piece of Europe right here in Canada. So my son was just blown away by all this. We did a whole bunch of walking, but you guys tuned in not to see the beautiful pictures of like this, this mural that's there. You guys tuned in to hear about Tesla. So let's talk about the Tesla and uh, what it does. So first of all, which Tesla do I have? I think that matters. It's a Tesla Y, uh, Tesla Model Y 2022. And it's a dual motor long range. So it's got the bigger battery. And uh, when I'm talking about battery percentages, I think that matters. So one of the first questions people are gonna ask is, what uh, what did the battery do? Like how much did you lose when you camp? So first of all, let's set the stage. I didn't check the full overnight temperature, but we went to bed well below zero Celsius. We live in Canada, we were uh, in Canada there. So, um, you know, whatever well below is, three, four, five, six, I don't know. But the first morning it was minus seven. Uh, the next morning it was minus three and minus three is probably the minus three temperature the whole night. Both nights we had snow. And one of the fun things is if we go back to this picture of the car is uh, this one maybe doesn't show as much as uh, the first night, but the entire car, the glass roof, the glass tailgate did not have snow on it, obviously, because we put it in camp mode, which we'll talk about in a second here. Uh, so the interior of the car stayed warm, completely comfortable. Uh, but the frunk, of course, no insulation there, had significant snow. And also the bar on the back, which is the tailgate opening to the uh, roof. So uh, that had significant amount of snow on there. But again, so, you know, how much insulation did the glass, does the glass provide? Not as much. Obviously the frunk kind of full of snow. So, um, so how did we do this? Well, I have a picture that again, I wasn't planning to take this or to show this picture uh, on a video. So I took it in the wrong orientation, but you can see here, this is the bed setup that we did in the back. Now, the first thing you're gonna have to know about sleeping in the back of a Tesla 
even a Model Y, it's not super wide. And I am six feet tall, I laid in there fine, but because we had no planning for this trip whatsoever, I didn't have the Tesla mattress or anything else that specifically fit the car. We threw a couple inch thick memory foam queen size mattress that kind of wrapped up around the sides. But the, the mattress here you're looking at, or the, the picture you're looking at here, is the bed with the two of us. So what I had to decide to do, the problem with the Tesla Model Y is the rear seats don't quite fold flat. They're just a smidgen up from flat. Very, very close, uh, certainly comfortable to sleep on, but not perfectly flat. So you would want to lay with your head slightly raised like a hospital bed, a hospital bed, you know, that's fresh on my mind. But you'd want to lay with your head to the front seats and your feet to the tailgate. Uh, that is what my son did and he slept fine. Uh, I found that because the edge of the seats folded over and I needed a little bit more room with moving the passenger seat forward, I found that my head didn't have the support. So you could build something up on the floor to give you a little extra head support or you could just do what I did and flip around. So I actually had my head at the tailgate and my feet by the passenger seat and my son laid the opposite way with his head by the, the driver's seat and his feet down by me. Now my son's not a big person, he's smaller than I am. And uh, so, you know, it was fine. He's, he's not, a, he, you know, he's uh, 11 years old, so he's not a huge person, but he's not also a tiny, tiny little kid. So that worked for us. And uh, in fact, how well did it work? Well, here's my sleep stage here. Uh, this is the um, Apple Watch thing. I had a great night's sleep in there. So let's talk about how we did this. Now, first of all, I lowered the temperature down. We both had warm sleeping bags, so we slept at about 17 degrees or so Celsius. Uh, which I'll put in whatever the um, Fahrenheit is. I'll put on the screen there for you so you can see that. It was a little cool when I woke up in the morning, not because the car didn't keep us warm, but because the vents in the car are towards the front of the car. And my head, which if you, as you can see is very well insulated, was at the tailgate. There are no air vents down by me, so the air would cool a little bit. And as we mentioned, there's no snow on the windows, so that did cause some cooler air to come through. Um, so I ended up warming it up a little bit in the morning when I woke up and uh, bring it up to 20 or so. But again, it was quite cool outside. The next night that we did this, so we did this two nights in a row, uh, it was around minus three or so the whole night. So again, I'll throw that Fahrenheit uh, equivalent up on screen there and had snow again that night and same thing, uh, but we kept it a little bit warmer the second night. Both nights, and this would be a, probably a nine to 10 hours in the car. My sleep time, you can see, was close to eight hours. My son needs more sleep than I do, so probably nine to 10 hours sleeping in that car. Both nights, we used 11% of the battery. So that blew my mind. Now, let's talk about why we only use 11%. I'd heard things like 30% and other stuff, so, this car does have the heat pump, and I think that does go to show you how efficient the car is with the heat pump. So that's like 10 hours of heating the car to be comfortable, and it uses 11% of your battery. So if you think about it on a long drive, how much battery are you really using? Now, maybe it's different when your car's moving versus the car stopped, but the efficiency of only losing 11% in two nights where it wasn't just myself that needed sleep, it was my son who had a very active day after being completely inactive for uh, many, many months, um, you know, he needed his sleep. So like I said, it was probably 10, maybe even longer than that hours uh, in the car just with the camp mode on. So camp mode does a couple things. I want to show you uh, first of all. So the first thing it does is I'm going to show you a picture first of the camp mode. Uh, I didn't clean the screen again. I wasn't planning on using these in a video, but the screen in camp mode initially starts off with just the regular screen. And then I don't know how long. 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, at some point it turns to this screen that you see here with the campfire. So maybe I'll just show you a little video clip of that now. The campfire actually moves and it, it, again, showing you a video of a screen, it's not as clear as it could be, but it's pretty cool that it goes in this camp mode. But then my brain was thinking, well, wait a minute, that's gonna keep us up at night if it's that bright at three in the morning. Um, now it's not that bright, but that's just what they do for, I'm guessing a half an hour or so before it turns off and you see this little screen here, which if you zoom right in, you can just sort of see, uh, you can tap to activate that screen again. So it is dark in the car in camp mode. That's not an issue. Uh, the other thing it does that's kind of nice is it allows your USB 
uh, USB-C ports in the car to stay active. And I believe it also allows the radio to stay active or the music or that kind of thing to stay active. Well, we didn't use that. Um, but the USB uh, ports, were, of course, were really useful. Charge my watch uh, eventually, charge my phone, uh, charge any other devices that we had to charge. So all of that works very well. The only thing it doesn't do is it doesn't lock the car. So we did that using the app, which I just kept by me on my phone um, to lock the car so we could have the car locked. So two nights, both probably in the round of 10-ish hours or so, uh, maybe even longer, um, and the car only used 11% both nights in the snow, in the winter, and I think that's pretty cool. So let's talk about sleep comfort again. Uh, I don't think this is going to work well with two full-size adults to sleep really, really well, especially if you're taller. You're going to have to figure out how to have your heads at, towards the front of the car, not towards the rear of the car, because the car does narrow down in the trunk. So my shoulders, I'm not a hugely broad guy, but I'm an average broad guy. My shoulders and somebody else's shoulders would be tight. You'd have to cuddle all kind of thing, but the car widens towards the front so when you have this rear seats folded down if you could sleep with your wider part of your body it's like your shoulders up front that would be good but if you're tall like me about six feet tall you do kind of have that taper off again because the rear seats as they fold don't quite meet the seat back so there's that gap over the floor um, and that makes it something that you'd have to just sort of balance to be able to put your pillows on but there's a couple other advantages of doing this in the tesla first of all it's just really cool my son and i woke up like super excited that we actually slept in a car in the middle of winter because first of all you can't do that in a gas car the same way it's you know not with the not completely comfortably not with the heat going on that kind of thing uh you know you leave it running idling that's just not as safe so it was really cool to sleep in relative silence and i will say it is relative silence once the car reaches temperature it's fairly quiet that wasn't an issue at all for us um, but one of the cool things about the Tesla that makes it possible, especially in the Model Y, where it has sort of the raised front seats compared to the Model 3, is the underfloor trunk in the rear and the frunk in the front. Because we had the entire trunk essentially full of our clothing, full of our sleeping bags, pillows, the uh, memory foam mattress, all that was sort of rolled up in the trunk. Uh, when we laid out the bed, we had to have room to sleep and therefore we had to move our food, our clothes, our other stuff. We had a spare pair of shoes. We had a couple pairs of shoes and boots because we knew it was going to snow. All of that stuff fit in the front of the Model Y and in the underfloor storage. And then a couple things like a snow brush and our snow boots we would put in the back seat on the floor. So again, everything was essentially under our bed or in the front. And having that frunk made a huge difference in being able to take two people's worth of stuff for the day. Now, we also brought our own breakfast because he thought it'd be cool to eat in the car and that kind of thing. So we had some meals out and a couple meals in. And the cool thing was we could fold everything into the trunk, fold the rear seats up. And the rear seats in a Tesla Model Y are pretty roomy. You could have a nice full meal there. So that's what we did. If we wanted to watch some YouTube, we could do that. So pretty cool experience. Uh, I'd be happy to chat with you guys more about this if you want to know more about it, uh, if you want to know about Tesla experiences. But yeah, long story short, can you sleep in a Tesla in the winter? Yeah. Is it comfortable? Pretty good. Maybe not so if you're huge, uh, but you know, I slept great in, back there with my son, which really surprised me. And um, you know, how much battery does he use? Well, in the winter, 11% a night is what I was using, which is kind of amazing to me. So there you go, there's my quick uh, review of camping in a Tesla. What happens if you camp in a Tesla in the middle of the winter? Now you know, and if you have any questions about it or you wanna know more, uh, feel free to let me know below and I'll do my best to answer your questions. Maybe we'll make a few more videos, do some fun stuff. Maybe we'll do some summer camping as well and see if it's, uh, uh, see the differences of that, of sleeping in the car that way. Thanks everybody for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.